unto God who always causes you, causes me to triumph in Christ. Triumphant by the blood. God expects you and I to insist based on revelation knowledge on what is made available to us and walk in it. You are welcome to a great moment in destiny. God is about to speak directly to you and the message coming right up is crafted by heaven not just to challenge you but to align your destiny. As you embrace divine instruction, expect that God's word is bringing about revival, healing, restoration and transformation to your entire life. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me and receive God's word through his choice vessel, Good Heart Obi Equeme. Philippians 3 verses 10, 11, 12, Amplified Classic. Shall we read together the count of three? One, two, three, go. For my determined purpose is that I may know him that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly and that I may in that same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection which it exerts over believers and that I may so share his sufferings as to be continually transformed in spirit into his likeness even to his death in the hope that if possible I may attain to the spiritual and moral resurrection that lifts me up out from among the dead even while in the body I can't hear you anymore not that I have now attained this ideal or have already been made perfect but I press on to lay hold of grasp and make my own that for which Christ Jesus, the Messiah, has laid hold of me and made me his own, living in the power of his resurrection. Our Father, yet again, we thank you deeply from the depth of our heart. I beseech you to take a call of fire from the altar of heaven. And on the lips and the tongues of clay of this seven son of yours, that this hour I will come to your people with nothing but a word from the throne of grace. Move all within the sound, on sight, online from where we are to the place you've ordained for us in destiny. Let the power of resurrection be made palpable, tangible, manifest in our life today in the name of the Lord. With us always to return the praise, the glory, the honor back unto you. In Jesus' victorious name we pray. Somebody shout a big amen. Tell your neighbor, I am living in the power of his resurrection. And you may be seated comfortably in God's wonderful presence. Dearly beloved, the resurrection of Jesus was indeed the very high point and the pinnacle, the epitome of the Christian faith. As wonderful as glorious, as exciting as the birth of Jesus was, even more than that is the fact of the truth that he died and he rose again. In many of the instances in his teachings, in his earthly ministry, he spoke very clearly that his mission to be born was to ultimately to die and ultimately to be raised again on the third day. Jesus was born to die. If all he did was to be born and not die, redemption will not be fulfilled for fallen mankind. It took his birth. It took his death. It took his resurrection for fallen man to be saved and to become a child of the living God. In the words of Jesus, 
in Mark 10 45 he says for even the son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many he came not to receive ministry he came to give ministry to the extent that in giving ministry he did it unto his death that one declares that he loved his own even unto the end and Gethsemane what he saw was not just him going to the grave but him taking the entire sins of the world of those who were born and those who were yet to be born and taking them to the grave and then successfully coming out of the grave on the third day what a miracle what a miracle as we look at the old testament in particular there are several scriptures about jesus christ mentioning that he is to be born and to die and ultimately rise the third day jesus knew that he had not just an appointment with death but an appointment with resurrection up to that point in time many died and not one rose again even those who rose again they died again all the prophets that came before jesus and after jesus they were born they had a birthday but as surely as they had a birthday they had a death day but no resurrection day jesus had a birthday he had a death day but he had a resurrection day somebody said a big amen he understood this as he walked on the earth for 33 and a half years that his life was timed on the earth and nothing was able to take him out before his time severally in the face of near death he would declare my time has not yet come my god he understood that nothing will take him out before his time he was born not just to die he was born to resurrect as well he understood his life was to give, be given as a sacrifice for the entire human race the bible declares in john 7 verse 6 in the words of jesus then jesus said unto them my time is not yet come but your time is always ready the world cannot hate you but me it hateth because i testify of it that the works thereof are evil go ye up into the onto the feast i go not up yet onto the feast for my time is not yet full come it was timed his days on the earth were numbered the bible declares he as a matter of fact came in the volume of the books to fulfill every word spoken concerning him in john 9 4 he declares that i must work the works of him who sent me while it is day because the night comes when no man can work so as long as i'm in the earth i am the light of the world he understood his time on the earth saints jesus was not murdered jesus was not a martyr <laughs> he wasn't killed because he lacked the power to stop those who killed him he wasn't martyred for a cause no sir jesus was a sacrificial lamb that willingly laid his life down and willingly took it up again it wasn't a case of assassination murder matada in fact in the face of apparent death he said don't you know that i can now pray to my father and he will send to me 12 legions of angels to deliver me the bible declares in john 10 verse 18 no man takes it from me but i lay it down of myself that's a choice 
I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. He was the lamb of sacrifice. He was the lamb that was foreshadowed in the slaying of lambs and rams and goats to cover the sins of the children of Israel. It was the foreshadowing of Jesus. And the day John saw him walk, said, Behold the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Not just the sins in multiplicated forms, but the very Adamic sin was what he came to deal with. He came to deal with the root of sin. Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He came to give his life as a ransom for many. He wasn't killed. He wasn't slaughtered. He wasn't murdered. He laid down his life willingly for you and for me. Bible declares in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. Hear this. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Can somebody thank God for the sacrifice of Jesus? Thank you, Jesus, that you took my place in weakness, that I may take your place in strength. You took my place in fear, anxiety, trepidation, that I may take your place in faith and confidence. You took my place in death, that I could take your place in life. You took my place in sin, that I could take your place in righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. That is the definition of the cross. The meeting point of humanity and divinity. The point where humanity kissed divinity at the best. And there was a cross, a place of exchange. Saints, the tomb is empty. The stone has been rolled away. And there's none that ought to be in the grave anymore. Shut up, big amen. Hallelujah. For even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. As that lamb was slain in Exodus and the blood was placed upon the doppers and lintel and God pronounced a pass over the angel of death in a like manner. So more powerful is the blood of Jesus Christ speaking for you and for me. More powerful. More powerful than the blood of goats and bulls. More powerful than the blood of Abel. Hallelujah to Jesus. Saints, the resurrection is the game changer of Christianity. All other prophets came. They died. None rose. But this one who alone declared in John 14 verse 6 that I am the way. My God. Not a way. I am the way. The truth. The life. He came. He died. But as surely as he died, there was a resurrection born. We call Friday the day he was buried, Good Friday. But looking in the natural, there was nothing really, really so good about the death of Christ. But guess what? In, in eternity, it was the one thing requisite for the redemption of mankind. So that the Bible says, if the prince of this world had known, they would never have crucified or touched or killed the Son of Glory. What happened on Friday, as so it seemed it was doomed, Gloom, gloom, pain. There was three hours darkness on the earth. The earth mourned. Guess what? As surely as there was a Friday, there was a Sunday. I don't know what you're going through. You may be in your own Friday season. Things look dark, bleak, and difficult, tempestuous. You're worried. Will there be a better day? Listen, the first resurrection shows us that as surely as there is a Friday, there's coming a Sunday morning. Somebody shout a big amen. Glory to Jesus. Game changer of Christianity's resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus wasn't only about our Savior alone rising from the grave, but in addition, it indicated the opening of the graves for all who believe in Him. My God. He's called our first fruit resurrection. First fruit. The principle of the first fruit is this. 
if the first is blessed, the lump of the rest is blessed. So if the head went to hell and was able to rise successfully, it indicates that the body also has arisen in the spirit and the day will come in the future when the body will also rise in a like manner as the head rose. It's called the first fruit of resurrection. Waymaker, miracle worker, we sing. Hallelujah. The Bible in Hebrews 2, 9 and 10. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, oh yeah, should taste death, should taste death, should taste death, should taste death for every man. Every man includes you, includes me. He has tasted death for you and for me. Such mercy, such love. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things. Hear this. In bringing not some, not few, many sons unto glory. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings the intent the desire of your father in his birth in his death in his resurrection is that perhaps many sons will come unto glory it wasn't just about jesus the head it was about the body of christ those who believe in him hallelujah to jesus hallelujah to jesus first corinthians 15 19 to 22 first corinthians 15 19 if in this life now apostle paul was a man who really downloaded a great amount of revelation of the resurrection i want to encourage you to read the entire 15th chapter of first corinthians the entire chapter literally deals with resurrection our time would have gone through one by one but the whole chapter literally deals about that subject of resurrection is a resident chapter in the Bible. Now here, part of his discourse on this matter says, for in this life, if only we have hope in Christ, right, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become, hear this, the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death adam by man came also the resurrection of the dead jesus for as in adam all die even so my god in christ shall all be made alive hallelujah in the first adam all die you were born in sin you were conceived in iniquity it wasn't something you had a choice over. It's Adamic sin flown through human blood. But you see, when we come into Christ, literally, literally, he gives us a new lease of life. The Bible says concerning the first Adam that he was made a living soul, but the last man, the last second Adam, the last man is made a life-giving spirit. So we were born naturally by the first Adam. But if you're born again, you're a child of God, you have been regenerated, a regene with the life of God into Christ-likeness. It says he has come, not, not, not just a living soul, but a life-giving spirit. Hello, somebody? So if you're born again, you have been inoculated with the life of Jesus Christ. The Bible declares in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, hallelujah, condition one, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And all things from that point are of God. It's a regeneration. And if you're not born again just yet, you can be a part of those who have been regenerated by the life of Christ. In the first Adam, we're born into sin. But in the last Adam, we're born into life. Hallelujah. 
What it simply means, beloved, is that as believers on the earth today, you and I have hope beyond our days here. Paul said, if though we're born again here on the earth and all we had is 100 years to, you know, clap, jump, enjoy healing, breakthrough, miracles, you know, heaven on earth. If that's all we had, 100 years of this life of being born again and there's no eternity or heaven, he said, we have all the most miserable. But he went on to continue his discourse that if that's the case, we might as well eat and drink and die. Praise God. But guess what? We have hope beyond our days here on the earth. That's why as a believer, death is never final. No, death is not final. You may have lost a loved one, but if you lost that loved one in Christ, you have a hope of a resurrection. By the mercy, by the grace of God, on that resurrection morning, you will meet all of your loved ones who passed on to glory. Why? When you are born again, you have a hope of resurrection. If Jesus came from the grave, all who believe in him will also enjoy and experience resurrection. Hallelujah to Jesus. So we don't sorrow as those who don't have hope when we have lost a loved one. Bible declares in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14, But I will not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that word is really death as you know death to be that you sorrow not even as those even as those others which have no hope but if we believe that jesus died and rose again that means your salvation <laughs> is hinged on you believing this truth that he died and rose again you really can't be born again except you believe that you believe with your heart that christ came christ died christ rose and then the second part of salvation is that you confess with your mouth what you believe so paul is saying here that just as so if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them which sleep in christ will he bring with him for the next few minutes we'll have I want to discuss resurrection in five categories five categories number one resurrection as found in prophecy resurrection as found in prophecy prophecy will be mean a foreshadowing of resurrection number two I want to discuss this as resurrection in the types types both in the new testament and the old testament types in the new and the old the types of re resurrection number three I want to discuss resurrection of jesus as the first fruit from the grave number three the resurrection of jesus as first fruit from the grave number four we want to discuss the future resurrection of the saints that die in christ the future resurrection of the saints that die in christ number five quite weightily want to discuss what it means to live in the power of his resurrection today experientially today the power of his resurrection the prayer offered up in our text by apostle paul they desired to know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings if by any means he may come into conformity with the death of Christ he wasn't speaking about a future resurrection only he was speaking about the possibility of experiencing that power whilst he was still in his mortal body praise God somebody number one in prophecy all through scriptures you find many scriptures that point to the resurrection but the classical one will be hosea 612 hosea 612 very classical straight to the point come and let us return unto the lord for he hath torn and he will heal us he has smitten he will bind us up hear this after two days will he revive us in the third day he will raise us up glory to god and we shall live 
in his side. Revival precedes resurrection. Hallelujah. 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 In the words of Jesus, speaking to his disciples after his death and burial, walking on the street of Emmaus in Luke 24, 25, it says, Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe. Hear what? All that the prophets have spoken. What did they say? Ought not Christ have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So what happened to Christ had been prophesied years ago. As we look at the Old Testament, we find a number of foreshadows. What's a shadow or foreshadow? Something that happens but reflects the real. It's not the real, but it reminds you of the reality or the existence of the real. I'll share a few foreshadows in the Old Testament. In the number 17, the Lord had added Moses to get the 12 tribes of Israel to bring their rods into the temple. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod, the man's rod, the man's rod, amongst the 12, the man's rod, whom I shall choose, shall blossom. And I will make to cease from the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. Verse 8. And it came to pass that on the morrow, say morrow, say morrow. Morrow means the next day, right? This means it's a 24-hour miracle. My God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I perceive somebody is about to bump into a 24-hour miracle on this resurrection morning. On the morrow, on the morrow, Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, oh, yeah, yeah, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and bloomed and blossoms, bloom blossoms, and yielded almonds. This was a type of a resurrection, of a resurrection. What was a dead stick amongst the twelve received a quickening or a burden of fruits. Foreshadow. Another foreshadow, very interesting, is found in Ezekiel 37. The classical story of the Valley of Dry Bones. Verse 10 says, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into me, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. You remember? This was hitherto dry bones strewn in the valley, dry, helpless, hopeless. But at the instance of a prophetic word, the bones began to move bone to bone, joint to joint, ligament, flesh, sinew. Guess what? And then the breath of God came upon all of that mass of flesh. It rose to be a strong and mighty army. Hear what the Lord says Ezekiel 37 13 and 14. You shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, all my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land, then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. What the mouth of the Lord has declared over you, his good hand will perform in this season. And in this year, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The prophetic word over and over you revive to revive will be an experience. It won't just be a prophecy or a mantra or something said by a man. No, sir. May it become your experience between now and the end of the year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rose to be a strong and a mighty army. A type of the resurrection. Valley of dry bones. That will be your experience in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are examples in the Old Testament that are bound that speak of the dead being resurrected. Yeah, 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 yeah. In 2 Kings 4 in particular, the story was told about the woman of Shunem who understood that Elijah was a man of God and told the husband, hey, let's build a house or build a room in a house for this man of God. And you know the story? And the woman said to the prophet, hey, this boy you sent prophetically is dead. What do I do? 
Hear this, 2 Kings 4.32. And when Elijah was come into the house, behold, the child was dead, 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 Old Testament dead. And laid upon his bed, he went in therefore and shut the door upon them, twain, and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. The child came back to life. Is a foreshadow of resurrection. The child died, but the child came back to life. Praise God. Praise God. All were under the old covenant. Another instance is found in the story told about Elisha's bones. You know the story, 2 Kings chapter 13. Uh, the Bible says on a particular day there was war, and then a man died, and they threw the dead man into the, the, the tomb of Elisha. Uh, they threw the dead man, dead man, dead man, dead man, dead man into the tomb of Elisha and by the virtue of contact with the anointing that stayed for I don't know how many years but guess what? The dead man came back to life. That is a foreshadow of resurrection. Hallelujah. Look at that. Second Kings 13, 21. And it came to pass as they were burying a man that behold, they spied a band of men and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up to his feet. This honor the old covenant, all foreshadowing the reality of resurrection. Number two, want to see resurrection as types in the New Testament. The classical example is that of Lazarus, found in John 11. Lazarus, the brother of Miriam Martha, had died. They called upon Jesus to come. He tarried for two, three days. By the time he came to the tomb of Lazarus, it was four days. He was gone. Gone. We pick up the story in John eleven forty. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shalt see the glory of the Lord. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people who stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast heard sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And the rest is history. Bible says that he came out with grave clothes, tomb, 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 and he declared, lose him and let it go. Again, a foreshadow that there is a thing called resurrection. But you see, dearly beloved, in all of these examples, whether in the Old Testament or the New, that remind us of this, 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 this amazing experience, those that rose died again. Hello, somebody. But Jesus, when he rose from the grave, he rose never to die again. So our pattern of resurrection is not after the order of the shadow, but after the order of the real. Hello, somebody. As surely as he was raised from the grave, for those who believe at his coming, uh, that those who have died in Christ will also rise from the grave. Guess what? Never to die again. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Somebody who has hope of a resurrection. Shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Number three, the resurrection of Jesus as first fruit. Let's read again. We read earlier. Let's read again and remind ourselves. In 1 Corinthians 15, 19 to 22. Please let's read. In this life, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead, hallelujah, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 
We are told in scriptures that Jesus was brought from the grave by the spirit of holiness and the power of resurrection. Romans 1 4. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. It was said that Jesus cast out devils by the finger of God. Say with me, finger of God. It was said that Jesus brought them out from the land of bondage with a mighty and outstretched arm. Another level of power. <laughs> but when we speak of what brought Christ from the grave, it was called a resurrection power. It is that power that changes everything and every equation in a man's life. It speaks of a change of story and a change of position. It speaks of possibilities to be attained. Hallelujah. Here, Apostle Paul again in Philippians 3 verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four, the future resurrection of the saints that die in Christ. As mentioned earlier, believers who die in Christ, they have a hope. A hope of a resurrection morning. Christ, our first fruit, and we also by the mercy and grace of God in Christ will rise again. Apostle Paul dealt extensively about this resurrection in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, but I want to highlight a few things. He spoke about the saints when they do rise, rising, listen carefully, in different degrees of glory. So there's the glory of the sun, it's the glory of the moon, Glory of the stars. And the stars themselves differ in glory. So it says that we are sown in corruption. We are risen in incorruption. And as we are risen, it says, we will all have differing degrees of glories in our bodies. While all will be immortal. The bodies who will receive will differ in glory. Why is that? God is a rewarder of faithfulness. We don't serve to be saved, but we serve to be rewarded. Praise the Lord somebody. Right? Bible says in Daniel, I believe Daniel 12 verse 3 or verse 2. Let's look quickly. Thank you. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some, yeah, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Say, God forbid, and me forbid. Verse 3. And they that be wise, say with me, wise. Fantastic. Shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, shining. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So it, it means that your involvement in turning others to God is tied somehow or the other to the kind of brightness you ultimately have. Is that correct? All right, all right. Now give me Proverbs 11.30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that winneth souls is wise. So this is wise and when someone down the wise shall shine as the stars. Beloved, it is to our own credit to be involved in reaching out to the lost. It's to our own reward, both in time and eternity. Because that is the very heartbeat of the Father. It's declared in 2 Peter 3 verse 8 and 9 that he, he, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, but, but he desires uh, 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 that all men may be saved. Praise the Lord. 
He doesn't count slackness as men count slackness, but he's long suffering towards us, not willing that any any perish, but that all will be saved. So the heartbeat of the Father is that all who Christ died for will be saved. And guess what? They can't be saved until they hear the good news. They can't hear the good news until somebody is set and or somebody preaches to them. And the, nobody can preach until they're sent. In other words, you're sent to proclaim the good news, they hear the good news, and they turn to righteousness. The truth is that you and I have been sent to go into the world and proclaim the glorious gospel. Many times the church is waiting for the world to come into the church, but I find we're asked by God to go into the world, to look for the world, and then bring them to the church. Praise the Lord somebody. Praise the Lord somebody. I pray that God will begin to stir our hearts to a whole new degree to share this burden and this passion of our master for us to reach out to the lost on the bus, in the plane, around us, having our tracks ready, whatever it is, just being desired to share the love of Christ to all we we'll come in contact with. And we're going to spend that stop praying more about this so our heart can be softened and tender to become in a place to do God's will in that regard. Shout a big amen. All right. Now, if you look at verse 42, you see five changes that will happen to the body that will receive. Number one is sown in corruption, raised in incorruption, sown in dishonor, raised in glory, sown in weakness, raised in power, sown in an, as a natural body, raised a spiritual body. Sown in corruption, raised in... I mean, you can't compare what body God will give you at resurrection. Hallelujah. 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 Though our outer body may be perishing in this world, guess what? Our inward man, our spirit man is being renewed day by day. Hallelujah. But the day will come that God will exchange this body for yet another glorious body. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number five living in the power of his resurrection for today hallelujah it is true there's coming a day of resurrection nobody knows the time of the hour but it's equally true that god uh, expects us to begin to live and partake of that power of his resurrection even today in our mortal bodies praise god so it's not something we defer to rapture to some point in time. No, even in our body, mortal bodies now, we can begin to insist that the price he paid for us, we can walk in it at least to a great measure. There are benefits in the now that came as a result of the resurrection of Jesus. Number one, you've been empowered to live like him. Empowered to live like him. Not by your power, not by, by power to live like him. So when Christ shall appear, we shall be like him. Number two, beloved, we're told in Romans 8, 11, that if the same spirit that raised Christ dwells in you, that same spirit will quicken or energize your mortal body. So by the virtue of his resurrection, we can live our lives in health and in strength. Quickens our mortal body. The resurrection of Jesus also has come to wipe away from us any spots and wrinkles and, 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 and blots and blemishes of shame and disgrace. So we've not been called on to shame and disgrace. We've been called on to honor and on to glory. We're called unto honor and to glory. Revelation 5.12 5, says, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor and glory, and blessing. Resurrection. Resurrection. Resurrection power of Jesus also has come to put us in the place where we can enjoy dominion. Ephesians 1, the last few verses. We're told that he has put all power under his feet and brought it under the church, his body. 
So we've been exalted far above all principality and power. And he gave the same power to the church. Far above all principalities and power and might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So, that power of resurrection affords the opportunity to rule over earthly affairs. The things that are anti-covenant, not in the scriptures, not God's perfect will for you, you can insist and resist. It will not be your portion. Saints, I begin to find that the things that God has made available to us, they need to be fought for to be established. They don't fall upon you like a carrot or ripe mangoes. No. God expects you and I to insist based on revelation knowledge on what is made available to us and walk in it. Somebody once said that life is not fun fair. It's a warfare. What you war for is what you establish. Look through the whole New Testament. You see God get us in the mode of war. Just as soldiers of Christ, we ought not to entangle ourselves with civilian affairs. So we may please him who called us to be soldiers of Christ. You're a warrior. That's a warrior. There's a warrior in you. Paul, by the Spirit, says, we fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, where we're called and proclaim a good profession. Fight. So, saints, the Lord will have us begin to cultivate and to develop a warring mentality to take God's promises, God's prophecies, and insist on them to be so. Will it be easy? Not necessarily so. Is it doable? Certainly so. And the beauty is this, we are encouraged to know huh, for those who stand up to fight, now thanks be unto God who always causes you, causes me to triumph in Christ. Triumphant by the blood. Hallelujah. There is triumph for you in every battle. By the mercy, by the grace of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're reminded there's coming a day in the future when the saints who die in Christ will rise again. But we're reminded that even in our day and our today, we can begin by revelation knowledge, begin to walk in a measure of that power of his resurrection. As we prepare our hearts to engage the table of covenant, we consider our text for this month, Revelation 12, 11, to remind ourselves we are indeed triumphant by the blood. Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. And by the word of the testimony, simply means you give testimony to what the blood did for us. Number three, they love not their lives unto the death. You know, I'm beginning to realize also that the cross precedes the crown. The thorn precedes the throne. At the same time Paul mentioned the power of resurrection, he mentioned the sufferings of Christ. The Bible says if we suffer with him, we'll be glorified with him. If we identify with his sufferings, we'll also in turn identify with him in his glory. The last part of our text says, and they love not their life to death. They need to come a place in our walk with God where we determine and decide we're going all the way with the master. We agree with Jesus that says, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Not pain, not gain. Nothing at all. Not even death. Not even life. Nothing. 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 Nothing means nothing. This morning, rise on your feet as we thank the Lord yet again for the miracle of resurrection from the depth of our heart. Can you thank him for 30 seconds or one minute at least? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's only those who know Jesus and die in him that qualify for resurrection. Those who don't know him will not qualify. 
Do you know him? Are you assured of your eternal well-being? You can this morning. By opening your heart to invite the master to be your Lord and your Savior. Yes. In the next few moments, I want to lead you to Christ, if you will, please. Because the Bible declares in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I knock on the door. If any man will open the door, I will come in and sup and fellowship. He's inviting any man and every man. But somebody here, Jesus knocking on your door yet again. Thank you, Lord. Don't ignore this knocking. Don't. 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 You're saying, Pastor, pray with me. On this resurrection morn, I want to turn my life to Jesus. I want to live for him completely. No double dealing. I want to turn everything within me to serve him, to love him. Wherever you are, raise your right hand up unashamedly. For some, it's a call for rededication. For others, it's a call for salvation. Your right hand, all over the hall. Online answer. I believe all of us in one way or the other, we're making a fresh commitment to the Lord. Let's pray together. See hands? Let's pray. Pray with me, Heavenly Father. I can't hear you. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I stand before you just as I am. Beseeching you for your mercy. Lamb of glory, I acknowledge you as the one who died for me and rose victorious for me. Because you live, I will live also. Forgive me all of my sins. I open the door of my heart as I invite you and welcome you to sup with me, to fellowship with me. Take over this life, spirit, soul, mind, psyche, emotions, will, and body. I declare and declare this all day. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for grace to live fully maximally for you in Jesus name Father we honor the great price you paid for us you hung high spread wide ah bruised battered shattered beyond human recognition we're so grateful unimaginable pain you went through for the entire human race we're so grateful to be inaugurated and initiated into this life that you made available for those who believe who believe Ask your breath upon this element to declare them sanctified as we eat and drink. Let life be infused into us. In every area of our lives, we require your power to be at work. Let it be released by your mercy and your grace. In the name of the Lord, healings and miracles, signs and wonders. The open of our eyes to behold great and wonderful things in your holy word. Thank you for favor, irresistible favor upon our lives. Our heads receiving oil this hour. Thank you, Lord, just for security, safety, and prote protection, preservation. This and much more we receive this hour in the name of the Lord Christ. After supper, Jesus took bread, he blessed, broken, said, take in my body broken for you. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, we were, we are healed. As we eat, we eat in honor of Jesus. We eat in faith, yet we eat with thanksgiving. Let's receive, I appreciate it, our Lord and Master. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Can somebody plead the blood? Plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Oh, plead the blood. We'll plead the blood. Begin to be specific, specific over your mind, over your heart, your finances. Go ahead. Please identify those areas. Your family, your children. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I plead the blood. Over Nigeria, over Abuja, GBEC, the prepared place. I plead the blood. I plead the blood over the eldership, the leadership, the workforce, the membership. I plead the blood of our children, youth ministry. I plead the blood. I plead the blood over the works of our hand. I plead the blood. Ah, yeah, yeah. We plead the blood. I plead the blood. We plead the blood. I plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood for those in the womb yet to be born. We plead the blood. Nigeria, we plead the blood. Abuja, FC, the blood. Ancient pyramid, the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, it speaks for us. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Lord, we honor you. We celebrate you. 
If there be any years who have transgressed in a thought, in a word, we did, we bring all under the bloodstained banner. We dip ourselves in the pool of the blood, cause our heart to become tender, supple, pliable, to love you more than before. Ah, to love you like you've loved us. Grant us the grace to go all the way with you, leaving nothing, leaving nothing. We make room in our hearts for you to fill every space and every place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may drink with fancy. You have just experienced the preaching and teaching ministry of Good Heart Obi Ekweme, lead pastor of Revival House of Glory International Church, Rajik, and the apostolic leader of the Horn of Revival Ministry, HORM, a global outreach ministry mandated to carry the torch of revival across cities and nations. If you would like to ask a question, share your prayer request or testimony, or get more messages or books from Goodheart, please call or text 0805-223-4444 or email info at rogic.org. Also, download the Horn of Revival Ministry app on Google Play or Apple Store to connect with a variety of free quality resources including Rogic Radio and our refreshing daily devotions to take you higher in life. Keep hearing the Word of God. It will produce intimacy with His Spirit for uncommon encounters on the earth.